Today I'm going to show you how to use the pen tool in Photoshop. Hey guys and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace and you can find me on the all new redesign Flurn.com where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. And today's episode is all about the pen tool. We're going to show you guys the benefits of using the pen tool, how to actually start using the pen tool, how to edit those selections you're going to make with the pen tool, and then finally use all that to cut someone out of their background. So the pen tool is super useful in Photoshop. It's the most advanced way to make a selection in Photoshop and it's actually the most accurate way to make a selection. So if you need to cut something out of their background, the pen tool every single time is going to be your best option. It takes a little bit longer to use the pen tool than some of the other techniques, but when it comes to accuracy, it's second to none. So to start off, I'm just gonna show you guys some of the basics of the pen tool and then we're gonna use it on an image. So here we are in Photoshop. I'm just going to hit P for the pen tool. Now you'll see there, if you click and hold here where the pen tool are, you'll see a couple of other options like add anchor point, delete anchor point, convert point, tool, things like that. Those you can actually get to with keyboard shortcuts. So we're just going to go regular pen tool. This is what we want. Okay, now with the pen tool, basically it's, it starts off a lot like your lasso tool or the polygonal lasso tool. If I just click a couple times, it basically just connects those points. So this point got connected to that point, got connected to that point, and then down here, and then I'm gonna go back to my original point there, and I'm gonna see a little O next to my pen tool. I'm gonna click that, and that's gonna close up that little path. Okay, now with that path, what I can do is I can turn that into a selection really easy. I just have to right click here and go to make selection, and I'm just, just gonna choose to feather the radius, zero pixels, and hit okay. So now we have a selection that's exactly where that pen path was. All right, let's say we want to alter that now. I'm going to hit Command or Control D. We don't see anything, but if I go back over here to my paths. So whenever you're using a pen tool, it creates paths. So we're going to click over here, and you can see my work path. If I click on this, it basically just brings this path back to me. So it's stored totally separately. It's not, it has nothing to do with selections or layers or channels. Paths are their own separate things, and they're used to make selections. So I'm going to click on this path again, and then here with my pen tool, we're going to hit Control or Command to actually select this path. So now you can see if I hit Control or Command and click off, it's not selected, and then if I click right on the path, it becomes selected. So the other cool thing about the pen tool and using the paths are you can actually change any of these points at any time. If I hold down the Control or the Command key and click on any one of my points, I can move these around. So moving these around allows me to basically change what would wind up being my selection. I can move entire lines around. You can see just by clicking here on the line. Just make sure you actually get the line. There we go. Or I can move around specific points as well. Just like that. Now this is really, really basic. Most of the time you're going to be using paths that are going to have curves involved, not just straight lines. So let's go ahead and delete that work path. We'll hit yes. And we're going to create another path. So this time, instead of just clicking, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and drag, and that's going to create curves. So I'm going to click here and drag up this way, okay? And then I'm going to click over here and drag down in this direction. And you can see these anchor points appear. And these anchor points are basically pulling my pen path. This is the path here, and these are the points. It's a little bit confusing at first, but after a couple times using it, you'll, you'll have no question. So it basically is going to pull my pen path in different directions. So this point here is going to pull the next path in that direction. So if I click here, I can already see this point is pulling it in that direction. So I'm just going to come right around here. We're going to create just kind of like a, a shape right now. There's, there's no real method or rhyme to this shape. Okay, so that's our shape right now. Um, I can still move any of this if I want. So Control or Command, and I can click on any one of these points. So clicking on this point, you can see I can move that point. I can move this point here. There we go. And I can move these, every single one of these, kind of giving its own special little features. Now I can also move these anchor points as well. If I hold Control or Command and click on one of those, let's just make sure we actually get it. There we go. I can move these around as well. So these kind of dictate what's actually going to happen with the path. I can bring it out skinny and do whatever I want. I can also, not only can I click there, but I can also click right here on the curve, and I can actually dictate, like, control or command, click right here on the curve, and I can dictate how that looks as well. So basically, we've showed you guys how to make straight lines, and we've shown you how to make curves. It's really simple. 
Now, if I want to turn a curved line into a straight line, all I have to do is hold Alt or Option and click right here on that point. All right, there we go. And you can see, basically, this is just going to be a straight line. Now, if I click a couple times, I'm going to click on all these points. There we go. All right. I just added a couple new points on accident. There we go. Click there, and you can see these are all back to straight lines. So now if I hold Alt or Option again and click and drag, it's just going to turn those back into curves. So from a curve to a straight line, super, super simple. All you have to do is click and drag out. And you can also make a, one side that starts with a curve, just like this, and you can click here on any of these points with Alt or Option, and then end it in a point. So basically, just about any shape you can imagine, you can create with the pen tool. So this is just kind of a quick little intro on how to use it, but um, we're going to actually get into using it here. Let's just delete this path here. There we go. Delete that path. We're going to go back to our layers, and we've got an image of a girl on a background, and I'm going to show you how to cut this out of the background. So up until now, we just made a bunch of shapes using the pen tool, and that's not really that helpful, but when you think about a person or an outline or something, is really just a bunch of shapes, um, we're just going to apply the same thing we just learned and actually trace a person and cut her out of her background. So I'm going to basically, we're going to start here down at the bottom. Let's go ahead and zoom in to this image, and we're going to use, again, with our pen tool, we're going to click right down here on the bottom, and I'm just going to click and drag, and it's going to make some curves. Now, when cutting someone out of the background, generally I want to stay like slightly inside of the selection. I don't want my selection right out here because I want I want to make sure that they actually do get cut out of their background. Now, you can be as precise as you want with this, or you can be a little bit more loose, which is kind of how I'm treating this right now. So basically, how clo however close you want your lines to the actual edges, you can just click any of these selection points, the anchor points here, and actually adjust your curves even after you make them. All right, so we've gone up into that point. We're going to start go ahead and uh, we're going to start going right down her shoulder. Now, remember, this place is where we wanted. If I just click here, we can see my curve kind of goes up and out there because the curves, they don't want to create angles. They always want to be continuous curves. So you have to force it to actually make that curve. And you can do that, let's just bring this out like this, by holding the Alt or the Option key. Remember, we sh that's how we made a point earlier when we were just on white. So Alt or Option, I'm going to click on this and just bring it down in this direction. And then now, basically, this is a point. So it's not a new path. It's nothing new. It's just coming here, point, and then going back down in that direction. All right. And now we're just going to go up. And the other great thing I think about the pen tool is you can actually simplify quite a bit um, people's wardrobes and outfits and things like that. Like, there's a little crease there, but I'm just going to leave it out. I, I don't think we need it. All right. There we go. I'm going to bring that up and then hold the Control or the Command key and click on this point, and then if her arm did that, which that'd be scary, uh, we would go ahead and put it there, but it doesn't. So we're going to go ahead and put it right there on the outside. And one of my goals whenever I'm using my pen tool is I like to create basically as few points as possible. Like as many times as I click, it's just going to like give another bit of curve to the shape. So like this, you know, from here to there, I need to create a point, right? Because we have a change in direction. So I'm going to hold Alt or Option, click here and drag this up in that direction, and then click here and drag out in that direction. So we have a point, and then this kind of curves up and out there. I'm going to need to do the same thing here. So Alt or Option, click there. There we go. And I'm going to click right up there, and we're going to end her collar right over there. All right, again, the same thing. Alt or Option, we need to change direction now. So anytime you need a drastic change in direction, that's when you're going to hit Alt or Option. All right, there we go. And now it's time to cut her face out of the background. So basically just bringing this in. And if I need to move any of these points at any time, I can do that. It's not a problem. So let's say we create a point that we don't really like. All you have to do is bring your mouse cursor over top of that point, and it'll have a little minus sign next to it. Just click there when it has the minus, and it'll delete that point for you. And if you feel like you need another point, just hover right over your line and click, and it's going to add a point for you. So you can just take care of working right individually one area at a time. You don't have to worry about you know, if you get it right in the moment, because you can always edit this curve. You can come back and change it at any point in time. And this curve is being stored right here in our, in our paths dialog. All right, 
Now, this is obviously not going to create, like, we're about to get to the hair. This is obviously not going to cut out every single little bit of hair. This is, you know, right now I'm mainly focusing on getting to the general shape of her hair. If you guys are interested in cutting out hair from the background, we have some great episodes on that. We'll link to them so you can see how those work. Right now I'm just mostly interested in getting like a nice good selection right around her head. All right, there we go. Get a little part in there. All right, and again, you can see I'm kind of focusing on right inside of her hairline. I don't want to go out here because it's when I actually go to cut my subject out from the background, it's actually going to include part of the background in that. All right, so again, we're just going to click here, drag up in this direction. I'm going to hold Alt or Option because we're going to change direction. And there we go. We're going to come right down here. And then I'm just going to really simplify her hair. I'm going to click all the way down here, click and drag out. There we go. And kind of come up in that direction. All right. And we're almost done cutting our subject out. You can see, like, this doesn't actually take that long. It's basically just clicking and dragging. Like here, I'm going to click out and drag in the way that I actually want the next point to go. So in this case, hold Alt or Option, kind of bring that over. Click there, Alt or Option again, bring that out. And I want it to go in this way, so I'm going to click here and drag there. And that just kind of defines that in that direction. We've got a change in angle. Hold Alt or Option. We're going to click there. And there we go. And we're going to do the same. So Alt or Option, got a change in angle again. And then we're bringing that in. So you can see, if I didn't hold Alt or Option and I just click there, that's what it's going to do. So I need to make sure I'm changing the angle each one of these times and that will help account for the change in angle of my actual piece of clothing that I'm trying to cut out. All right, there we go. Let's go ahead and go right around her nails. Click and drag. Now this time we don't have, you know, big changes of angle, right? Especially around her nails. Anytime you have a continuous curve, you don't need to hold Alt or Option to make that change because there, there is no change to be made. If I just click and drag like this, you know, if I was creating something that was smooth like that, you don't have to make sure you change that angle every single time because that's just for when you have a change of angle. All right, we're going to bring this down here. Looking pretty good. All right, again, Alt or Option because we've got a bit of a change of angle there. All right, again, there we go. Bring that in, and this time I'm just kind of, you know, following the direction of her dress. And making sure to stay slightly inside the actual dress itself. Okay, there we go. So we've gone from one side of our subject all the way to the bottom. Now I'm going to go ahead and close this up. We're going to go back to our paths. Here's my work path, and what I'm going to do is double click, and I'm just going to call this subject. And we're going to hit OK. So if I want to turn this into a selection, all I have to do is right click inside of the actual path and go to make selection. And this time I'm going to feather it just a little bit because you can see the edge is a little bit soft. Sometimes if you have a soft edge, which most of the time you will in photography, you don't want your edge to be too hard because it won't really look that realistic. So I'm just going to feather the radius by about 0.5 pixels, and we're going to hit OK. And that basically just turns everything that I just did into a selection. So now here are my layers. I'm just going to click on my layer mask. And there we can see our subject is cut out perfectly from her background. So if we wanted to create a new layer underneath it, I'm going to hit Shift Delete and fill that with white. Now she's on a completely white background and we are good to go. So everything is going to look exactly how we want it. And we can see we've got really nice clean lines completely surrounding our subject. The hair is going to be a little bit more on the um, <laughs> on the fuzzy side, I guess. So if you wanted to go in here and click on your layer mask, and then with your brush tool, you could use like a soft layer and just paint white at about 20%. You could go ahead and start bringing in some of the detail from her hair. So we're done creating our path. Now it's time to use that path to cut our subject out of her background. 
So what we're going to do is I've got my layers, channels, and paths. And if you don't see paths, just go to Window, and then down here to Paths. And it's going to open up your Paths dialog. Now, here's our latest path. This is our subject path. And what we're going to do is I'm going to hold Control or Command and click on that. And it's going to turn basically that pen path that I just made into a selection. All right, so back here on my layers, now that we have a selection, we can use that on a layer to create a layer mask. So right here on a layer, we're going to click on our layer mask button. There we go. And we've got our cu subject cut out perfectly from her background. Let's just create a new layer underneath. And I'm going to hit Shift Delete on that, fill it 50% gray. And there we can see our subject is perfectly cut out of her background. And anytime you wanted to go, you could click on your path again. Let's say you wanted to go in here and just you know, adjust one area of her arm, something like that. You can just bring back with your pen tool again, and you can make changes to the selection at any point in time. So if now I wanted to hold on Control or Command and click on that, I can just inverse that and paint black on my layer mask, and then basically it would just paint that right away. But we would still have a super clean edge because we were able to use the existing pen path. I just altered it a little bit and then changed my layer mask from that. So there's a quick introduction on how to use the pen path and how you can quickly cut someone out of the background by using a path and then making that as a layer mask. Thanks for watching today's episode, guys. I hope you enjoyed learning how to use the pen tool and how you can actually use it to cut out just about anything from the background. The harder the edge, the better. So this is not going to work so well on a cloud, but on a person or a car or a Flurn mug, it's going to work perfectly. If you like what we're doing here at Flurn, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and leave us a comment right down below if you have an idea for an episode or if you have a question about today's episode. And if you have some friends who'd love to learn about photography and Photoshop, be sure to share Flurn. Share the word, share the Flurn, share the love. <laughs> Thanks so much, guys. I'll Flurn you later. And you can see it cuts our perfect art. <laughs> and you can see it cuts the perfect. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> you can use it to cut pretty much everything out. <sighs> I, I don't, not nothing, holy. <laughs> or you can hold down control.